This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. Yo, yo, Richie. Happy Friday. How are you? Happy Friday. It's good. It's good. Good day. Um, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, we get to go. Uh, this is another uh, back to our roots, talking to an entrepreneur. So those are always the, the fun ones. Again, no offense to anybody else's a partner who's listening. But uh, yeah, we get to get to our roots and talk to somebody who's built the business. Uh, and the, this time, this guy's built the business for a long time. So this is not somebody that just started a couple months ago. So I think we'll be able to pull some real knowledge out there that people can share and hear from. So pretty pumped about that. Um, and also, I think for people that listened to a couple episodes ago, uh, episode 68, where we talked about um, it was the build assets online guys where they were they built multiple assets. I think if that's something that you're interested in, like once you take e-commerce as a career, um, you know I think hold on, save, wait to the end. We'll get into some of that. So um, should should be pretty fun. Yeah, I like the little teaser there. <laughs> yeah, all right. We're, we're we're working on our podcasting game. We got to throw in a teaser, let people. Get our listen time up there, everybody. So you know we're working on our skills too. So um, with that, let's uh, let's bring in our guest, Brian Carver, the CEO of Atlas Forty Six. How's it going, Brian? Good. How's everybody doing? We're fantastic here. It's uh, you know we're we're at West Coast. We're so we got like this little. There's a little bit of smoke in the air for people. I don't want to put a date on this, but people might. Uh, know that that's going on here out in the West, but uh, Brian, where, where are we talking to you from? So I'm in the Midwest. Um, I'm at our other facility in uh, Hillsboro, Illinois. Um, it's about 30 minutes south of Springfield, okay. um, Illinois. So headquartered in St. Louis, but I'm at the other facilities today. Got it. Yeah, actually you've had Several guests in Southern Illinois as of over the past couple months here. So, um, and actually our content writer is from that area. So um, anyway, I, I know the area I've been, um, I know what cornfields look like from the Midwest myself. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, happy to have you on. Um, and, and like, actually you kind of have like a classic Midwestern company too. I mean, I, I mean, I can say that being a Midwesterner, but like, give us, mm-hmm. give us what is, what is Atlas 46? So we manufacture um, premium tool carriage systems. So um, from tool belts to tool vest, we actually are rather large in the mechanic industry, off-roading also. So we do a lot of tool rolls and tool bags. Um, and we actually do some high-end blue jeans and workwear also. Okay. So building a nice little brand there beyond just the, you know, I know. I'll use the word tool belts. I know it's more than that. So, you know, take mm-hmm. that as, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, I, lo- I looked at the site. So yeah, this is kind of like some very fancy, like, it's not just a tool belt. Like you got everything uh, I'm, I'm, for people looking at the video. I'm like touching my body, like, you know, okay, mm-hmm. here's the, you know, cordless drill is going to be right here. There's like, everything's kind of set up and well thought out of, I, I would say it's not just a, uh, a made overseas belt that doesn't, doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> yeah. So everything that we make is interchangeable. So people can move their tools around where they feel like carrying it. And, you know, and depending on the job that they're doing, they can, you know, one day they may be working on plumbing. The other day they may be working on drywall. They can move their equipment to where they want to carry it, you know. And so it's it's something that we take a lot of time and thought out. We measure every single product every single stitch you know um we do we do cycle counts on all of our fabrics so very very high end very expensive very detail oriented product line okay yeah so can you take us back and give a little bit of the origin story of how how did atlas 46 get started um mm-hmm. were you already in this business or was this mm-hmm. how, how did this come about well um well, so they, I actually would have been in software um, and web development for since about 2005. Um, you know, I went to school for economics, I uh, was a financial director for an IT firm that did maintenance on Linux nodes and supercomputers. Um, 
hated it. Um, and then went out on my own. And, um, at the same time as my, my wife quit her teaching job. So basically went two years without an income and she loved that. Um, we're still married, so she didn't get rid of me yet. Um, but so I started off pro programming, um, was a programmer, did it for a long time, primarily in the restaurant industry. Um, so we built a lot of stuff in the restaurant industry. I built Probably a good chunk of e-commerce, you know, sites. I also, we wrote, our big thing was we wrote some software distribution for the food food business that the restaurants could place orders um, to the distributors for their, their onion rings or anything that they got inside of the restaurants. And we only focused on the smaller restaurants. So the mom and pops, we didn't really do any of the chain business and focused on small business all the way throughout, you know, and then, um, then after that, we, uh, you know, I was kind of, um, I actually got sick for about three years and I was sick and the company was kind of running its thing. And, you know, and my staff didn't want me back, uh, after those three years, they were like, <laughs> you know, we're doing better without you. So stay away. So um, my father actually had this company. They had about 10 employees and he was thinking about shutting it down. Um, so that was about roughly four years ago. So it was about 10 employees. And I said, well, before you shut it down, let me see. Um, let me see what I can do. You know, um, I actually hated programming with a passion. I know some people love it, but it was just not my I like programming, but don't necessarily like programming for other people. Um, and so I, I said, well, let me see what I can do with it. And over four years, we've grown from 10 employees to, I think I have about 230 employees today. Um, we have, you know, and we've started acquiring other brands and investing in other online direct to consumer brands is what we primarily focus on. So we sell all over the globe has really been, um, how we've grown. Wow. I mean, that's a great, great story there. I mean, that's only four years now. Um, mm -hmm. So you guys have been around longer than that, but you kind of, it, it was kind of the last four years when you really got your hands on it, that you kind of got that mm -hmm. growth surge. Now mm -hmm. this is made in, made in American products, made in America mm -hmm. products. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of those employees are probably manufacturing this stuff. Are you, are you making it in the mm -hmm. area where you, uh, in the area where you live or is it all around the U S yeah, so right now we we have three facilities. We've got ten facilities scheduled for the next five years. Um, you know, and we make everything in the Midwest. One of the things that we're doing that that is a little bit different is obviously it's hard to find sewers in the U.S. Um, you know, it's just not a craft that a lot of people do anymore. Um, so what we did is we said, you know, how can we do this? a little bit different. And we started going to these smaller communities that were um, economically not in great shape. And, you know, whether the coal mine closure or anything like that, and we opened up buildings and buildings that were historic. I'm, I love history. So I'm an avid reader of history. And we, you know, the, we pick the buildings that were falling down the most. Um, one of the buildings that we're in is from 1906. And we've rehabbed it completely with hardwood floors, temperature controlled. We hire and develop in teams. We wrote our own production system, ERP system, obviously being a programmer has its advantages. Um, and so we can measure our efficiency really real time. And so we're not looking to set up sweatshops. We're not looking to drive price out of it. We're looking to innovate at a high, high level is the way we look at it. And so, um, so we have these three, these multiple facilities that we have these sewers in and cut and make the product ourselves. And we um, are looking more towards vertical integration to even opening our own textile mills and growing that way. So it's a little bit, a little bit different as far as manufacturing is concerned, but we really like restoring these communities. It's amazing to watch a community that is empty, you know, downtown now, put in, you know, 70 to a hundred people and watch the, that, that community flourish. And we, 
put in the background, you'll see the brick and mortar um, store. So we actually open up storefronts, which we don't make um, any money off of really, but they're there for our customers to come in and see, and it helps revitalize these communities. So we put our facilities in their downtown areas, right? Which people told us we couldn't do that, that it wouldn't work logistically, but um, we were able to figure it out and it's worked very, very well. That's fantastic. It's, it's nice. Like we knew you were a successful store, but we didn't realize we were going to get a, a nice feel good story out of this too. I mean, not on so many levels, that's, that's incredible. Like you're, you're going into a town that's having a hard time. You're, you're giving them a facelift in the town by bringing in this brick and mortar store where just having a little bit more vibrancy and movement and someone coming into town, just that, that little bit probably adds a spark into everyone seeing something positive happening. Um, obviously you're giving more people jobs. It, mm-hmm. it sounded as if maybe even you're willing to train people that might not have been into that. Yeah. Cause we're starting to get into the sewing part. So yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Like, you know, here we are trying to talk e-commerce, but you're, you know, that you're doing good stuff in the world too. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, no, we, most everybody we've trained from scratch. So, um, you know, and, and we take a lot of pride in providing opportunities with it internally. That's the advantage of being a fast growing company. Um, and our best product designer now, I want to say three years ago was, um, did the maintenance on the machinery. Right. And, uh, you know, and he is a gentleman who was from Bosnia and he is a fantastic, fantastic designer. And to watch him thrive is one of the best feelings personally for me to watch that, to watch him go and be a world class designer and our go to designer um, when it comes to the soft good industry. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, like Richie said, awesome in a lot of ways. Like you get to revitalize some neighborhoods, um, you know, and I, I'm from a, a, a town of a thousand, you know, in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, yeah, people don't really open up factories in the downtown. You're going to get like a warehouse closer to the freeway mm-hmm. or whatever. But like, yeah, the people that are now working at those old buildings are now going to the cafe that was struggling to go have mm-hmm. lunch and like kind of brings a little vibrancy back to the these you know, some of these downtown main street areas are not, they're not doing all that well in for a lot of reasons, but um, you know, Mm -hmm. so awesome. Awesome there. Now, Richie, I can tell you got a question or else I was going to. Yeah, no, I mean, all right. We're probably probably going the same direction. So uh, if not, you can go for it. 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 So you, you, you had this facility or not that facility, but your Mm -hmm. dad was already doing the business. You knew Mm -hmm. programming, you, you picked equid. And, Mm -hmm. and I'd, I'd imagine like that was a piece of cake for you being a programmer because it's pretty easy for most people Um, Mm -hmm. anyway. And so what was it? What were, were, did you kind of see, Hey, we need to focus on online. Was that the main, was that your main Mm -hmm. push and what, what's working for you now? Like where, how did you get started with that? And Mm -hmm. then like, tell us a little bit about how you told your story online um, and just what you're doing there. So the way that I, uh, the way that I looked at it, um, I looked at it as uh, in the beginning, they were, they were selling to a few stores and uh, they weren't really selling anything online. And when I looked at it, I said, you know, and I got it, I actually knew of X card. So X card. And, and I knew that there were some people th- that left X card and went to Equid, you know, and opened Equid and did that. And when I saw the Equid platform, I, I love the, obviously it being cloud-based and the ease of integration and to design. And, you know, and one of the things is the advantage of, if you're, if you're a true programmer, you also understand what is, you know, what's going to work, work well from the fact of, okay, it's not going to cause a lot of maintenance on me. It's not going, I don't have to worry as much about the security issues as I do with other ones. Right. And just that ease of use is, is I'm trying to 
resuscitate a manufacturer, I don't need that other aggravation, right? I, I just don't have time for it, right? Um, it, it is what it really came down to me. And then I looked at it, you know, obviously being a very numbers driven person and understanding numbers, I asked myself this question is like, so these dealers and distributors are taking 50%, right? Um, of the, the, of the prize. So if I sell $10,000 worth, they're, they're taking five grand, right? Um, at retail price. And I said, so if I can advertise, at better than they can and i can spend two grand advertising and still get ten thousand dollars i'm better off to um advertise myself so i've really you know really stayed focused on our roas numbers right um i'm a person who likes the scientific method very studying the numbers and studying if we create this advertisement how is it engaging? Am I getting at least over a multiple of three on my row as if I'm getting over that multiple of three, you know, 3.3 um, is really that 30%. So if I'm getting acquiring a new customer at 30%, when I'm paying a dealer 50%, it's easy for me to do the math that I'm better off to bypass the dealer and distributor and just go direct across the globe. Um, and so we sell all over the globe now, and I don't have to worry about a um, a dealer or distributor beating me up on price either, right? That, you know, trying to, you know, beat me up on my margin and making it cheaper because I have no desire to make cheap product, right? I have desire to make, you know, product that's not disposable. I want to make the best quality that's humanly possible because I... I don't believe, you know, one of our philosophies is I don't believe that communities are disposable. I don't believe that people are disposable and I don't believe that product are disposable either. So that's something that we stay focused on. And, you know, so I can keep my margins in line as we're continuing to grow and basically make sure that we scale up in the direct to consumer all online approach is what we do. Yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of hit this direct consumer wave, which is now obviously accelerated with you know COVID, you know, but it was it was going on long before long before the coronavirus, direct consumer was a thing. So this is not a recent phenomenon. But yeah, I mean mm-hmm. I would say particularly your product, it's a higher end product. Like this is not a this is not you're not gonna find this at Home Depot, right? Like this is a mm-hmm. so you're you're selling to people that are looking for that level of quality and are willing to pay for it too. You know, like mm-hmm. it's not just mm-hmm. a, it's not expensive for luxury's sake. It's expensive because it's that good. And people who have burnt through multiple different tool belts and tool chests are like, they know they, mm-hmm. they want good tools. They want good quality stuff. That's going to help them do their job better. So I think the, the push was right because now you're going to a global audience, even if it was at first, mm-hmm. just, us and english speaking but you're you know my guess is that these are you know mechanics that they make you know they make money as well and if they mm-hmm. can they have something that helps them do their job well they make more money like it's a it's a craft it's a you know mm-hmm. it's a part of your tool tool belt i guess tool chest mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. i don't want to go too far down on yeah. my, my puns but um yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean and now you're reaching a global audience where they're you know I, i'll just name a price i don't know the price but Maybe there's only in a small community, there's only so many people that are willing to pay 500 bucks for the best damn tool belt ever. Mm-hmm. But worldwide, there's plenty, plenty of people that are willing to pay that price. So, you can yeah. And so, yeah. And so what we do is we have a we have a saying here, right? Um, I want one percent of the global market. I don't want I'm not interested in getting more than that. Right. One um, percent of the global construction industry is a large, large percentage. And that means that I have to convince one out of a hundred, right. You know, basically to buy, buy my product, right. That's willing to buy a premium product. That's going the money we're putting back into these communities to revitalize these communities, you know, um, and offering something that's different and well thought, thought out, um, is the way we approach it. So, um, 
you know, I'm not looking for everybody, you know, um, nor do I want everybody. Um, I want the people that believe the same way that we do in high quality product and doing right, being good stewards of the community. Yep. So you mentioned ROAS. So just for everybody mm-hmm. listening, ROAS is return on ad spend. And you mentioned 3.3. So that's basically, I'll do the math for everybody. If you spend a hundred bucks, you should get $330 back, which is essentially 30% of your expenditure is now on ads where that that might sound shocking to somebody, but that is, again, that's a pretty good number. That's sort of like a, a good mm-hmm. benchmark in the world. Um, and you mentioned, yeah, you had to pay 50% to a supplier, which doesn't mean that they pay, doesn't mean they're always a great customer. They're going to, comp- you know, there's all, and it's hard to get those, those uh, distributors mm-hmm. or retailers. So now, okay, we gave some definitions of people listening. Now, how did you go about advertising um, you have all we call the niche product, um, you know, like how did you go about learning what was going to work? Where did you start? Mm-hmm. You know, like, is this a Google? Is this a Facebook? Where, where was your, mm-hmm. uh, how did you start advertising, I guess? Yeah. So primarily Google and Facebook, obviously they're the big two. We do some stuff with Pinterest too, right? Always focused on the row at the row as side of things. Um, and so that's where we started. One of the things that I found, at least for us, um, segmenting my audience was the worst thing that I could do. Um, and I've had talks with Facebook and I've had talks with Google. Why am I getting better results when I'm not dialing into, let's say construction workers, right? I get better results and, Um, I don't know if it's the way we market. I haven't really figured it out yet, but we do a lot better. And that's where I always go more towards a scientific role towards it, right? Even if Google and Facebook tell me one thing, um, I look at it completely open-minded. And I say, well, I want to analyze the results that I'm actually getting back and testing everything and constantly testing it to see if that still holds true is a way that we approach it. Okay. So Google, I'm assuming that's more, maybe previously it was a little more search based. Now is going to be more Google shopping. Is that the the case? Yeah. 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 Google shopping. Um, You know, and I learned over the, you know, one of the things that, you know, um, I, you know, and I've told my staff and they never knew why I did it forever, but I don't really, care about search engine optimization don't care at all to be honest um you know i don't care i care primarily about is my brand doing the correct thing is my brand telling the story are we you know articulating you know marketing to me is the job of marketing is to articulate clearly what our company and business is doing to the community you know um and being as accurate and honest as we can with our consumer is the way that we, we, and we don't get focused on things um, that doesn't really do that. And so I think, you know, um, that we, we have great lot, you know, so we get these different tidbits of information from Facebook, YouTube, Google, you know, they're always trying to sell us something to be honest um, because we do spend a lot of money. And I verify it every time we do it, right? Because I've seen too much that their tips don't work as they claim they do, even though we're very patient. So we give it an amount of time and we assign a certain budget, but ultimately we see a lot of times it doesn't, doesn't necessarily work. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the question too. I mean, it's, it's nice to hear like, we're just going to focus on being good people, making a good product and take care of our community and the rest will just work out. Now, granted, you still, you still are placing ads because you got to let people Mm -hmm. know you're there, but uh, it's, it's, it's refreshing in this world where everyone's, again, you're saying, you know, they'll try to tell you, go down and segment like this. And for some people that might work. um, Mm -hmm. And it, but I'm, I'm interested in, so were you doing a lot of video and then maybe you were just keeping it wide and then remarketing to that video or what was your. Yeah. So we, we do the funneling approach for sure. Right. You know, so we do that top funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel, but we did a lot of video. 
we did a lot of photography. Um, I, you know, from a branding perspective, this goes to me being true to my market is I wanted to, I was like, look, when we were had 10, 20 people, I wanted to look like we had 10 or 20 people. So I didn't care that our videos were not top notch. I didn't care that our photos weren't top notch, right? As we continue to grow and we get bigger and bigger, we dial it in more and more each time we're, we're doing, um, now I promote from within. So these are people, a lot of, all of our marketing is still done from staff who one started off on our computerized cutter and what I, you know, and he's, you know, and he had some background in marketing and now he's, you know, um, now he's, you know, doing most of all of our video and he keeps improving them and we keep pushing and getting better. But I, we shoot on an iPhone still, um, you know, um, and just, really go about it and constantly push and we're not afraid to appear appear and um, we try to appear as who we actually are not as something that we want people to think that we are love that as well from from multiple angles you know um and actually if anyone's on the video you can see i i you know i got a little little shadow here on my face like you know hey we're <laughs> it is what <laughs> it is what it is we're, we are not as big as some of our competitors either so Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working out of my office here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and likewise for everybody listening too, um, we've said this in many other podcasts and, uh, we didn't tell you to say this, Brian, like just use what you have, you know, use a vi- mm-hmm. use an iPhone, create a video, post it, rinse, repeat, you know, and, and yeah, your first mm-hmm. video is probably not going to be, probably not going to be that good at all really, but, um, you have to have a first, so <laughs> get that mm-hmm. done. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So, all right. So I think we kind of know we've had a couple podcasts about, um, kind of Facebook funnels as well. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of, if anyone wants to dive deep on that, go, go back to a previous pod. I want to hear about more, you know, what kind of tips would you give to somebody that was just getting started trying to figure out their, either their brand story or their way to market their product, right? Like, of course, all products are different. You have what works for you, but like, mm-hmm. is there a any tips you think you could share that would help people just getting started on their marketing? So yeah, we we've, we've started to acquire other brands, right? You know, and one of the things is is I wanted to see if it would work across other brands. Um, you know, and um, and one of the things that I said is you know because everybody's kind of fearful, they get this fearfulness in the early stages, right? Um, of somebody's going to, I'm going to post something and people are going to criticize me or they're going to say something bad about my product. Right. You know, or, you know, and not to worry about it. Right. No matter what you do in this world, somebody's going to have a negative comment towards you. Right. Your job is to get it out there, get it to market. Right. And articulate it as clearly as you can, you know, and not be afraid to do it. But that's where a lot of them, fail and you know and it's one of those things is i don't i tell everybody look don't worry about the mistakes that you make make mistakes make many 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 mistakes we have made so many mistakes i cannot tell you how many mistakes that we 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 have but it's better than actually sitting on the bench you know um saying i wish i would have done that i wish uh, you know i would have done those other things so that's a great analogy uh, as you see, Jesse's got his twins hat on. So for the people who are just listening, they don't know. But I, I, the baseball analogy is perfect. You know, I mean, you have these guys that that swing and they hit only three out of ten that they swing at, and 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 they're Hall of Famers and they're getting paid millions mm-hmm. of dollars for succeeding thirty percent of the time. Like, and again, you're go you're with your one percent. You're only trying to succeed with one out of every hundred. Now it's mm-hmm. it's all in the paradigm and how you're looking at things sometimes too. And 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 I want to just reiterate that on your point there where you said don't get caught in because people will. There will be someone talking trash. Go back in all our presidencies. We don't even have to just look in this current mm-hmm. one. Like no one won by a hundred percent. And it and so it in some ways it's almost like you want to not get too caught up in the highs either of the compliment. Like it's nice to get the compliment, but you probably just want to stick 
to what you're doing. And of course, use it as a glowing review and all that stuff. Like I'm not saying hide from them, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. people are going to love you and people aren't going to like you. And you just got to stick to your plan and, and, um, you know, adjust according to what your, your internal metrics and your internal guidance mm-hmm. from your, your company or whatever you're, you're working with. But I love, mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and definitely ignore those social media content comments, by the way. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and Brian, you sell a higher end item. You know, I have another business that has a higher end item. And like, there, you'll find 50 people that say this is a ripoff, it's too expensive. But like, mm-hmm. um, there's other people that are buying it. They're like, oh, thank you for producing a high quality product because mm-hmm. they're out there. Ignore the, there's a lot, a lot of the haters. There's any people putting comments on this YouTube video here that we, uh, when we post this, we're going to see those two. And um, don't, don't get upset about that. Like they're, I, yeah. I always <laughs> say the more highly opinionated somebody is the more insecure they typically are. So, you know, um, and even us where we get a lot of people who, you know, say bad things. We also get a lot of people that say great things and you, you know, we try to not let 5% of the people that are negative disrupt the other 95% of people that are doing really, really fantastic things. And so we stay focused on that. And I'm not going to lie. I, I will from time to time jump on Instagram and read the comment and I'll want to say something back, you know, uh, you know, over the years it's gotten easier and easier on me. Right. You know, but uh, it was definitely, much, much tougher earlier on. And that's where I just try to, um, to avoid it now. Yep. I, I know that on many levels, I actually see a lot of the, a lot of the equity reviews kind of a lot of them mm-hmm. filtered through me. So, Hey, everybody out there, if you, you know, mm-hmm. it's not funny, uh, but I, I do mm-hmm. probably read these comments and, you know, you gotta, every now and then you gotta kind of, shrug it off a little bit, but try to try to find the nuggets that are actually useful in between the, you know, just random nonsense out there. So anyway, mm-hmm. I want, I don't want to get stuck on trolls cause it's just, mm-hmm. uh, it's just mm-hmm. uh, of the, the world we live in. Um, mm-hmm. But let's try to look a little more positive to it. You know, like you, you mm-hmm. mentioned a bunch of companies, brands that you're looking to acquire mm-hmm. or have acquired. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm really curious about that because I, I have an interest in that myself and I, I mm-hmm. like the idea of taking a skill set and applying it to another, another brand. Is there, mm-hmm. are there brands that you can share with us that, um, yeah, you know? yeah. So one of the ones is, uh, you know, um, a company called hardcore hammers, right. You know, um, that, the they're two owned by two brothers that I we've come in and partnered with and invested in the company. Right. And they, you know, they are actually growing at a faster rate than what Atlas did. Right. Same strategy. Um, you know, we set them up very, very the same way, same platform, same technology, you know, um, really the same model. And I wanted to see, okay, is this something that, you know, is just, you know, yeah, I really love our product, but is it something that another premium brand, we can do this with another premium brand. And it's been, you know, they've been, they were in business for 10 years, right. You know, um, before we started partnering with them, they were selling in the box stores, right. Um, I took them out of the box stores. Um, today they're probably selling about 20 times more than they sold when they were in the box stores um, and at better margins and yeah. making more money. And, um, and it, it's, not, it's such a thrill to watch these two guys who went out on their own, you know, um, two brothers that were just, you know, had an idea and had a dream and created a different type of hammer, you know, um, and struggled for 10 years to keep the doors open, right? to now thriving and making a good living and continuing to grow and having other major brands want to partner with them and, you know, um, label, I mean, you know, and I don't know how many people know the Supreme brand who they've done collaborations with Supreme, you know, um, and one of those hammers sold for $1,500, <laughs> you know, sold, they sold at $1,500 and, and to watch it is, is ultimately, you know, amazing. And we, you know, one of them, another one is in, um, 
um, an archery company that has been in business for 50 years. Same thing, box stores beating them up, getting rid of their margin, box store telling how they love the world, you know, but ultimately putting these smaller mom and pops out of business and basically saying, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. We've got our own direction and we'll go on our own direction. And our job is to create very great product and get it to the consumer. Your job is to sell our product, you know, and articulate to our consumer what we're actually doing and what we're about. That's why we pay you 50% and you weren't doing it, right? And you were just worried about beating me up on price all the time that, you know, and so it's nice to, um, it's nice to basically, you know, see that and we getting ready to launch a high end purse brand with, because I have two daughters, you know, I have two daughters, so it's very important to me. And the high end purse brand will be named after key women in America who have really helped, you know, empower women throughout our history, going back to the history theme, obviously, you know, but, um, those are, those are just a few of the brands. We've got a couple more, you know, schedule, scheduled, but that's what we're, what we're doing and, you know, continuing to push forward with. It was nice. I, w- I was going to say you were you kind of stuck in the same vertical there and it probably a little bit of the same demographic when, when you were doing the archery and then all of a sudden you threw in the purses on me. And so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the twist. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now you're going to yep. see for real how those skills uh, switch over, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I looked at the the hardcore hammers while we were looking at it, and mm-hmm. you know, like, and so at one level, like, it's just a hammer, right? Mm-hmm. But no, it's the best hammer, and I, I think mm-hmm. I, I've seen that a lot now in the past. Uh, this is like a five year trend now, where um, it's the best of fill in the blank product has become a very huge trend. Like, you mm-hmm. know, you can you can buy a bunch of stuff from Amazon, Mm -hmm. from Walmart and whatever. But if you want the best of whatever, you know, best Mm -hmm. pillow, the best toothbrush, like those, all those um, best ofs are becoming like a huge thing. And if Mm -hmm. you're somebody that uses a hammer all day long, you want the best hammer because that's your main tool. You know, like it's attached, it's attached to your hand all day long. So I I get it. I think that's a good, um, you know, you're kind of using what works. Yes, the purses is going to be a, a good challenge for you. So I'm, I'm excited to see how. Yeah, that and I and obviously we, you know, obviously I, you know, my wife and daughters make fun of me, and they're like, "You have zero fashion sense. You're lucky if you don't have stains on your shirt all the time." And you know, and yes, I do per, prefer hammers. Um, oh. You know, and so that's why with it, it was a, you know, a young lady who, you know, who's uh, 25 years old, who's going to be leading the brand. Right. And that we're, I am not looking to own all of it. Right. I'm looking to support another, another person who has a dream and has a passion. Right. And can't get it off of the ground and helping her get that dream and passion off of the ground and watching her succeed. I mean, that's a big, big deal um, for me, you know, that's no, great. And I do know, uh, that's also, there's, there's a uh, seamstress involved there as well. So you've already kind of had a yep. high end sewing thing. So I, I, I see the tie in, even if, you know, I get, it, it's a different, different market, but now I'm trying to think of how other people can apply this. So you've, you've, you've kind of had this, now there's a couple of businesses we're talking about. So you must have a, a tech stack, right? Like what is your, um, you know, there's going to be some commonalities there'll be some differences, but like, what do you, you know, random, uh, somebody comes to the door with a new, new idea tomorrow. What are you going to set them up with? Like, what is your apps and, and tech Besides stack? Besides Equid, Facebook, and Google. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, I already, I already knew Equid was going to be a part of it, you know, but like, but yeah, what are the other um, preferred apps you use? Like whether it's a site builder or um, there's all sorts of little pieces that connect. Yeah. Obviously it doesn't have to be yeah. Equid, you know, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so we obviously Equid is a central part. Um, you know, we do that. We use ShipStation, right? Um, so we integrate in with ShipStation. Obviously we're, we're programmers. So our production scheduling software and everything like that is, is made in house, right? So we program that in house um, as far as other apps, I mean, we integrate in with QuickBooks, right? Integrate in with QuickBooks, do that sort of integration. Um, 
you know, we find that some of the review softwares out there that send out emails that we've used in the Equit App Store has worked out worked out well. Um, the I think there's one currency converter, obviously, because we sell globally. I know that that works pretty well for us um, at that uh, that stage, and you know, and we obviously we we have a large um, large base of people that speak Spanish, and so we translate. You know, we translate um, most of our products, so they they can buy and and try to make it as user friendly as possible. But I would say, you know, uh, we ship station is obviously good from importing the orders, integrating in all of our different shipping partners and making sure that it goes in and out. Got it. So ship station is pretty key for you guys, particularly, you know, I get it. Once you start to do volume that you're doing, you, you need, you need some more firepower, right? Like just, Bottom line, like that's that's very important. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything on the advertising side that you prefer, or do you guys just use uh, Facebook natively, Google natively? Do you have any um, like ad software, uh, you know, for placing ads or social media software that ties stuff together? No, uh, well, I think we use Sprout Social a little bit to monitor our comments. So we use Sprout to basically help us monitor and you know, uh, all the different platforms to make sure it's all filtered into one place. We do use Zendesk. Um, you know, we yeah. use Zendesk for customer support, um, which is relatively good. I've used Zendesk for a long, long time and, you know, and that works pretty good. Um, but other than that, I think that's, that's really it. I mean, one of the things that I love with technology and what, what I always, you know, what I, as always, um, attracted me to you know equid i know i know my brother uses magento um you know my brother has a business and he uses you know a different software and i i love watching all of the problems that he has even though i told him don't do it uh, i said you don't it's going to end up being a nightmare on you and once a year i believe i get called to help him fix it um, uh-huh. and <laughs> and you know but that's a little bit of the um brotherly side of things you know we do use cloud fair uh on the front end right so everything goes through that which that's one of the things that i like you know so the other parts of our site that aren't obviously we embed you know the equid site into our system you know onto our site you know um on the products page is what we use um we started moving you know I still like hand coding stuff. So, you know, the Atlas side is just on in our regular platform. Our other brands are moved to, you know, we use Wix for doing the WYSIWYG side of things. And they use that because they're more on, you know, a little bit more on the artistic side than I still, still like some of that old code. So, <laughs> so you got, okay. So you use Wix is kind of your site builder you use for some of the other brands, but your own on Atlas 46 is a, more of a homegrown product then, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's, that takes some heavy lifting. Cool. Uh-huh. That's a little old school, but good for you. You know, like, you know, it, it's what, Hey, whatever works for you is, is, is what's what works, right? <laughs> Yeah, so. and I still do a lot of it. That way I still feel like I'm actually doing something and I'm somewhat important and I can feel useful throughout the day. Yeah. Now, this maybe you'll be in a case where like your previous company where you could go away for a while and people are like, don't don't come mm-hmm. back. You know, like now you've, you, you own the site. They can't get rid of you. Your employees. Exactly, you. exactly. Yeah. They try their hardest, but I'm still <laughs> hanging around and, you know, um, yeah. yeah. They good. definitely... They definitely, I think, would like to get rid of me without a doubt. <laughs> that's, that's probably a good sign. I don't know how, but, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. That's good. Yep. You got to keep people on their toes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Richie, what, what do you think here? What have we, what have we been missing here? What, what did we not ask yet? Man, I mean, I just love everything you're doing. I could talk to you forever. I know you got a lot going on. So I would just – I would say – you can pick one, or if you want to cover both, you can. If someone's listening to the show right now and say they have a skill set and they're just getting started with Equid, but they don't really know what they want to sell yet, maybe, what would be your advice for them to possibly find or approach a company that's doing it? Or vice versa, somebody who 
has a product and they would love to find somebody like you that knows mm-hmm. more of the techie side, either one or both. That would pretty much be the thing I'd want to close with other than uh, wishing we were out Midwest and could go have some dinner and uh, talk with you longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that if they're looking to sell something, obviously I, you know, um, which I didn't, didn't mention earlier, I actually started selling online e-commerce and, um, and about, I want to say the first time I sold e-commerce was 2001 ish frame, you know, frame there. I still remember walking through my college campus and picking up uh, how to code an HTML book. Right. Um, you know, and, uh, um, I started reselling, right. I started actually selling, um, you know, different things to online and, uh, built a, my own little website and, uh, you know, and was selling, I want to say about $3,000 a month worth of other people's products. And, you know, I was smart and I said, Oh, well, everybody told me you need to go get a real job after college. And so <laughs> I made the mistake of shutting it down. Um, but I think that, you have to get out there and do, do it right. Um, you have to, you have to take that risk. You have to be willing to learn to fail. Um, you know, I mean, if you do not take that risk, you're, you're, you'll never get there. Um, and connecting with people. Um, that's one of the things is I absolutely love talking to people, right? I love being around people. I love, talking about different ideas. I love being open to people challenging my approaches to things and telling me, actually, I don't think you know what you're talking about, Brian. I think that there's a better way to do this. Um, And from those conversations and sitting down and talking about that is where you, you create these new ideas that will make a difference, you know, Um, and getting rid of that self doubt, um, that self doubt of actually believing, you know, you always find ways to say, I can't do it. Right. You know, or this isn't going to sell. Um, I thought when I took this company over, I thought we may be, um, about a million to $2 million company. And that was it. Right. I thought that that would be as large as we would get. Well, we've crushed that, um, you know, and, and now I'm, you know, and I don't know where that, that ceiling is, you know? And so when people think, well, that would idea would never work. You really don't know until you start testing it. You know, um, you have no idea because I didn't think the first website that I opened up uh, in college, I didn't think I'd ever sell anything. I just wanted to learn how to program, um, you know, when I was in school and, people started buying product from our website. So it was, it's the most, for me, it's the most exhilarating thing. Um, when you, I still look at my orders every day and you get those orders, you know, um, through the Equid app, there's a little cha-ching button that goes cha-ching every time that, uh, a new order comes through. I still absolutely love it. So, that's that little dopamine hit. That's the that's the addiction we want to we want to uh, foster, I guess. <laughs> no, love it. <laughs> now I see why you're doing the purses. You got to have a place to put all that money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, manufacturing's not exactly cheap, so I, I constantly am buying, spending all the money buying new machinery and building new buildings. So. No, no, I'm just but, messing with you anyway. Yeah. I really, really just want to say, like, this is one of the best all-round podcasts we've had in a while. Like I said in the beginning, um, I, I, I knew you were a successful store, but it's really refreshing to see you doing it by empowering people, hiring from within, and 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 really championing and reminding people to get out and take chances and go for it because there's, there's always going to be that inner critic that if you let them win, it just gets easier for it to win every time. And you, you gotta, we're sometimes our own worst enemy. So just thanks for the reminder that, uh, you know, that you can, you win out of failing as long as you keep going for it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well said. I mean, 
you had mentioned even this was a niche site. So you were thinking maybe it can be worth a million or two and now mm-hmm. well beyond that. So like there's a lot of people thinking, hey, is this niche going to be big enough? It probably is. And you don't really know unless you get out there and give it a shot, you know. So yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one last thing, Jess, because you just touched on something. Because Brian had said here – the hammer, the hardcore hammers are even doing better. So the niche that fits in his niche, <laughs> you know, is even doing better. So there's, there's niches within niches. And so like expand the mind and, um, you know, go for it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Great way to end the week here. Well, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show, Brian. Thank you for yeah. your time. Um, anything you have, Jess? No, I think that's a great that's a great ending to the show and to the week. So uh, for everybody out there listening, get out there, take Brian's advice, and make it happen. Hey, this is Jesse and Rich. We want to let you know we really appreciate you listening. We hope you find the tips we give you helpful for growing your business. You can find all of our past episodes and a lot more useful stuff at equi.com forward slash podcast. And also check us out on your favorite podcasting platform like Apple Podcast or Stitcher. And make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing. Be sure to let us know what you think by rating and reviewing so we can serve you better. So subscribe on your favorite platform. And come join our community, check out the transcripts, or tell us why you would be a great guest at equid.com forward slash podcast. Do you have followers? Do you have an audience? Do you have influence that you haven't turned into money? We can. YouTubers, podcasters.